Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 16. So this tutorial we're going to take a look at bringing an NPC. We're going to look at subtitles and probably build, you know, a couple of little things here and there for our game. So something I want to touch upon before we go any further, if you've seen the little Unity show that I did um, saying there is too much bloom here or not enough bloom, uh, there is one little thing I made, a change between the last tutorial and this tutorial. And all it really was, was the particle system that we created not so long ago. So originally we had it as kind of big, thick, foggy looking uh, kind of you know, mist going on in our woods. All I've done now is change the particle size to be a lot smaller and changed it to a kind of off yellowy colour with um, a little bit of alpha taken away. So they kind of look like these little floaty particles in the air. I figured I would change these particles around because it would be more fitting with the style of game that we currently have. I don't think the whole kind of misty fog look uh, would have been quite so good, but you can see here, all I've done with the particles is just change how they look to give it that kind of flowing natural look. So, what are we going to do here? Well, I've explained that now, and I guess it's up to you what you want to do with the particles. You can change them if you want, you can keep them the same, you can keep it misty. But don't forget, you can use those uh, mist particles that we created earlier in a different place. You can also recreate what I've done here. Like I said, all it is is just a case of shrinking those particles and changing the colour. Also, probably change you know, randomise direction, that kind of thing, which is all within shape. Work with your shape and you can probably get something similar to what I have. So, NPCs, non-playable characters. You see them in pretty much every game. They're easy to use, easy to deal with. And how do we do it? Well, the asset store, which we've seen before, is just a plethora of amazing things that you can use. So I'm going to bring ourselves into this little cabin that we have the door that we created last time and I'm going to bring an NPC to stand right here. So if we go to the asset store you could literally search for any kind of NPC but as we do everything for free on this channel we're not going to look for something that is paid for. We're going to do something for free. If by all means you want to get something that is paid for, it's entirely up to you. The mechanics of everything will still be the same. So I'm shopping just on the old store because I actually kind of prefer it. And I have already brought in an NPC, but uh, I guess we could kind of search a little bit. So if we go to um, 3D models here and go to characters and then also click on free, you've got a multitude of uh, different characters that you could select right here and again it's entirely up to you which one you want to bring in I found one which I'm hopefully going to be able to find now it's this cat warrior one so if you search for cat warrior you'll be able to find this one right here uh, now you know cards on table here I have not been in touch with this developer this is just an asset I found which I quite like uh, I've not been paid for any of this. I've had no input on this particular NPC whatsoever. Again, it's just something I like. So if you want to use the same one I have, please do. If not, you find one that you think is more suitable for your game. So NPC, let's find the folder they're in, which is this one here. And in Cat Warrior, and then we have Prefab. And we can just drag and drop right there. And already you can see that's how it's going to look. So I'm going to increase the scale to 2 by 2 by 2 That may be a little bit too small still. I uh, haven't quite decided yet, uh, but we'll soon see. So what can we do with this NPC? Well, as it stands now and how it looks with our post-processing may be a little bit different, but it's something that we can work on. You don't necessarily have to stick with how the asset looks. For example, you could change how he looks visually. So if we go to... Uh, here in the hierarchy and select uh, where well, you've got bits of him here, there and everywhere. Uh, you could change his trousers, for example. If we click on the lower section and click over here on the material, you could change, for example, instead of using the legacy shader, use the standard shader. And I guess you could also change it. So let's perhaps um, duplicate the original texture. Uh, just to be clear, 
to get to that texture we've clicked on the albedo here and it highlights it right here and it's actually CW lower. So I'm going to take the duplicated one and add a normal map, create from grayscale, click on apply and then I'm going to attach that normal map to the lower half of our character. So you can see it's giving a different kind of look already. So if I increase the metallic and change the albedo to be slightly darker, you can see just how much already, how different our character can look. Now, if you're going to do this, you should probably keep everything consistent. So probably work on his upper half as well. So again, you could probably kind of change it to standard or any other shader, really. It, it all depends on how you want your game to look. You know, I'm not here to tell you how to make your game. I'm here to show you how to make a game and then you use that knowledge to create your own game. So let's just quickly apply that normal map right there. Uh, let's change it to albedo alpha, increase the metallic. So yeah, he looks a little bit strange, but again, customization. So let's take a look at how he looks with our post-processing active. So let's head over there. Uh, one thing um, I'm not too happy about at the moment as well is the sound of our footsteps. So I think we'll take a look at changing that next tutorial. Okay, so there's our guy. Yep, so he's going to give us a quest. So there's obviously going to be some subtitles. Should we deal with subtitles? Let's deal with subtitles. Now, there are different ways of having subtitles. A lot of games just have text at the bottom. Some games have actual text boxes. I'm going to show you how to do both because as I've said uh, quite early on in this series, we're going to show you everything that is possible in Unity. So we're not going to stick with one thing. We're going to try multiple. So how do we have subtitles? Well, everything is always in the canvas and we've dealt with the canvas before. We know what's going on. We know how it works. So if we go to game object, UI and go to text, it's literally text. You, you know this, we've done this already. So I'm going to bring it down the bottom and I'm going to zero out the position, double click so we can see where it is, bring our camera around so we can see a little better. And all we need to do is just align where we want our subtitles to be. So I'm going to change it to white so we can see it and then just bring it using the rec tool up to about there. Let's have it center and let's expand the text box area so we can actually read the subtitles. Might be wise to increase the text size as well. So let's change it to 20. And I'm going to delete the text in there because we don't need it uh, immediately. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to allow ourselves to talk to our NPC. And we've kind of already written similar script already because we, you know, we pick up the axe, we can pick up the gem, we can open the door, and it's a similar sort of script. So let's head to our scripts folder. Let's go to village one and let's right click, create C sharp script. And I'll call this NPC uh, chat. So we may rename this script at a later date. It just depends how what we're going to do. The intention I have with our guy, cat, cat guy right here is we're going to talk to him, but we can only actually progress our conversation if we have the axe, but firstly, we need to actually set all this up so we can talk to him. So although we have this script right here that we've just created, if we go to uh, one of the door opens, we can actually use this script that we have already. So generally the idea is, you know, we're near something and we can talk. So I'm going to copy the entirety of the script inside the class from the first variable all the way to the second to last close curly bracket. And then I'm going to paste it in NPC chat. Now we can use this to our advantage now because we don't need all of these particular variables. For example, we don't need the door. We don't need creak sound. So we can delete those. We do need the distance because we need to determine how far away we are from the character. Uh, we need action display. We need action text. We need extra cursor. We don't need open door. So we can now go down this script and delete everything we don't actually need. Uh, one thing we will need to add though, much like we have in other scripts that use the UI element, is using unityengine.ui. 
semicolon. So, what do we do? Well, void update is fine. Mouse over. Well, let's go down. Distance. Yep. Action. Yep. Display is going to say, instead of closed door, uh, what can we say? Talk. Simple as that. Uh, yep, we display the extra cursor and the action text. Otherwise, we get rid. If we press the action button, we don't need to play the creak sound because there is no creak. There's no animation to play. We do need to disable the box collider. And we don't need to actually change the box collider on open door because that's gone. So we turn off this action display, which is fine. Turn off the text and turn off the cursor when we actually speak. And then void on mouse exit is just standard as usual. So what else do we need to do to actually be able to talk to our character? Well, we need to declare the subtitles text object that we just created. So public game object and subtitle text. In fact, you know what? I think we should just shorten that to subtext semicolon. So when we talk to our character, i.e. when we press the action button, the first thing we're going to want to do is actually change what our uh, text says. So that's pretty obvious, isn't it? So we need to have subtext.get component. And then in the two chevrons, the you know spiky brackets, we need to have text. Open close bracket dot text is equal to whatever we want our character to say. And as I said, he's only going to speak to us if we have the axe. So if we don't have the axe, this is going to be his default um, speech, his default, you know, whatever he says. So we're going to say, please come back to me when you have a weapon. Semicolon and save. Okay. So, how do we uh, cope with this now? Because once we talk to him, that's it. He's not going to say anything else. See, that text is then going to stay on our screen forever. <laughs> so, we need to come up with a way of getting rid of it after a certain period of time. So, my intention to get this working correctly is to basically have a coroutine. And... Um, do you know, I can't remember if we've dealt with a coroutine. <laughs> we've done quite a few things, haven't we? And just quickly... Oh, we have. Of course we have, because we did it with swinging the axe. So, okay, so if we don't uh, uh, quite understand how a coroutine works, just head back a couple of tutorials. So we're going to use the coroutine here to wait for just a couple of seconds and then reset everything so we can actually talk to him again. So I enumerator, and we'll call it... Reset chat, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and we'll have yield return new wait for seconds, and in brackets, <clears throat> we'll wait for 2.5 with the F because it's a float, remember? At that point, we will have subtext equal to nothing. So we put it as blank right there. And last thing we need to do, uh, actually, yes. So the last thing we need to do there is re-enable the box collider right there and save. So, oh, of course, Jimmy, one more extra thing there. We need to uh, actually re-enable our um, coroutine. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. So <laughs> start coroutine. And in brackets, the name of that coroutine. Reset, chat, open, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, save. So the last thing we need to do is apply this particular script to an object which surrounds our player. So all we need to do is we go back to our cat warrior. Let's turn ourselves around. And we're going to encompass him in a cube. You'll be amazed how useful cubes can be in Unity. So, cube. Let's use our move tool just to position our cube. So, about there. Increase the size. 
And yeah, that should do the trick. So it pretty much covers him as a character. So we should be able to talk to him pretty much anywhere. Uh, let's turn off the mesh renderer. And then we just attach our NPC chat to our character right there. And then, yep, you've guessed it. We just need to attach those variables over here. So text is our subtitle text. And I may actually rename that object now. Subtitle text. Uh, back to our cube. And we just need to add in action text and action display. And I'm going to move the cube to the top by our cat warrior. In fact, I may move it inside the cat warrior and have it labeled as conversation. Close up our cat warrior, save the scene, and let's head over there in the game view and talk to our guy. So at the moment, even if we have an ax, he's still going to say the same. Well, that's what we're going to deal with in the next tutorial, which I'll explain all about in just a moment. So let's talk to our NPC. Please come back to me when you have a weapon. Okay, excellent. One thing I had just realized, we didn't re-enable the box collider. So we just need to put that as true right there. If you have any problems with the scripts, you can always get them on the website. Head over there, head to your downloads and assets section and head to the uh, series how to make a game for free which is this ultimate beginner series and tutorial number 16 and you can get the script uh, so let's just check if this is all in working order now please come back to me when you have a weapon will do again please come back to me when you have a weapon so he's going to keep saying that over and over at this point so you can see already that we're getting npcs into place we're getting a game world working making it more expansive now and I think ultimately what we need to do in the next tutorial is work on dialogue states. Uh, that being when we collect the axe, he says something different. And we'll also look at maybe a text box as well and just see where we get to from there. And also, uh, I think I did say earlier, we're going to have that grass uh, stepping sound rather than, you know, sounds like we're walking on hard floor, but we're actually walking on grass. So we're going to sort that out next time too. Until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.